Today I'm going to show you how to wire multiple pull stations to multiple fire alarms without a fire alarm control panel so that you can do this. First off, here is a disclaimer. I am not an electrician. I am not a fire alarm technician. This is not professional device on how to wire up fire alarm systems professionally. This video is aimed towards your fire alarm collector who is seeking to wire these things up at home. If you get lost on any of this stuff in the video, I always recommend contacting an electrician or somebody who's more professionally qualified to teach this sort of thing. And as always, I am not responsible for your actions. If you wire up something the wrong way and fry your alarms or get electrocuted or start a fire, I am not responsible for your actions. Before you wire up your fire alarm, you might wanna make sure that it's not an addressable fire alarm. Pull stations that are addressable might have an addressable module in the back such as this or this, and you can convert pull stations to conventional, which would allow you to use it without a fire alarm control panel. However, when it comes to actual fire alarms, these would be really hard, if not impossible, to convert to conventional. So before you buy an alarm, you might want to do a little bit of research and just make sure that it is conventional. So the first thing you need to think about when you're wiring up a fire alarm is the power source. What kind of power are you giving the fire alarm in order for it to run? So you need to give it the right power, otherwise it's not going to work properly. And you can do that by looking at the back of the alarm, and as you can see there's this sticker and it says 20-31 VDC. That means this alarm will operate between 20 and 31 volts of DC power. And then it also gives the FWR range. Most fire alarms out there are gonna work around 24 volts DC. However, I have seen models that are 12 volts DC. I have seen models that are between 12 and 24 volts DC. I have seen models that run on AC power, such as 12 volts AC. And I even have seen models that run all the way up to 120 volts AC. Let's talk about how you find a power source. Well, here's one way. You can use a power adapter. If you take a look at the front of this adapter, it says input 120 volts AC, so it plugs into the wall, and then output is nine volts DC. So this adapter would only give nine volts DC, and if you remember, the range on the back of this was between 20 and 31 volts DC. Here's another trick that's very well known. You can use batteries. This right here is a nine volt battery, and this is DC power. So what you can do is you can take another nine volt battery and connect them, and bang, right there you have 18 volts. And if you connect another one, now we have 27 volts of filtered DC power that will work on this alarm. On the back of the alarm, you can see a plus and a minus symbol. And on the battery, you can see a plus symbol. And what does that mean? The other side is probably the minus side. So I'm sure you can see where we're going here. If we connect the plus to the plus and the minus to the minus, this alarm should sound. When it comes to actual wires, for the most part, I use FPLR 18 gauge wire. This is the good stuff that you see in buildings. However, when you're just collecting these alarms, you can use more traditional options that you might find at a hardware store. So let's go ahead and try and wire up the alarm to the battery. So right here are terminals and you can unscrew it and it loosens the piece, which would allow you to fit a wire in. So we're gonna go ahead and put a wire in and then we have to tighten the screw, which will tighten down on the wire. And now the wire has essentially become latched on to the alarm. So now we'll add in another wire to the negative side. There we go, both wired in. All the alarms I use in this video have terminal screws in the back of them, but what if you have a fire alarm that has actual pigtail wires? Well, it's the same, except you might need to use wire nuts in order to wire them up. Let's go ahead and connect the positive to the positive side of the battery and the negative to the negative side of the battery. Brace yourself, this might be loud. Here we go. And yep, that powers the fire alarm and it works. So if you open up the fire alarm pull station, all there is is a button. So with that button, all we're gonna do is create a simple light switch circuit so that when you pull the alarm, the alarm sounds and when you reset it, it stops sounding. So if you take a look at the back of the pull station, you can see that there is a terminal block on the back of the unit as well. And there's only two wires going to two terminals on the button. So we're only gonna focus on the terminals that the wires are actually going to. 
terminal 2 and terminal 1. Let's go ahead and start by wiring in the wire that we're going to use on the positive side of the battery or the positive side of your power source into the positive side of the terminal on the fire alarm. Now let's go ahead and connect the negative wire that comes from the negative side of your power source into the pull station. Now remember the pull station is just a button so it doesn't really matter which terminal you use just as long as it goes on one of them. All it does is connect the circuit. So now we have a positive and a negative. There's got to be some way that these connect. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to take our extra spare wire here and just connect it into the negative side of the fire alarm and the other open terminal on the pull station. And then when we use these other two wires to connect it into our power source, we should have a simple light switch circuit. With everything all wired up, let's go ahead and activate the alarm. Here we go. There it is. Now let's talk about adding another fire alarm and another pull station to the circuit. When you're wiring in another fire alarm pull station, just think about taking this button and extending it over to this button. And how do you do that? Well, you have to take more wires from here and extend it over to here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another set of two wires and we're gonna wire in two wires here and bring it over to here. So now we've wired in two extra wires here, one in each terminal, and we're gonna take the ends of those wires, which are right here, and we're gonna wire it in to the terminal block on this pull station, one in each terminal. There it is, it's that easy. Now we have two pull stations wired in. Now let's take the fire alarm and wire it in to another fire alarm. I have a wheel lock MT here and we're going to wire it over. So it's essentially the same thing as a pull station of just adding an additional two wires in here and carrying it over, except we have to make sure that the positive goes to the positive of this alarm and the negative goes to the negative of this alarm. Now notice this fire alarm has four terminal screws. This is a four wire alarm. I used this alarm on purpose so that I could explain this to you. So a four wire alarm can be set up so that two wires powers the strobe and two wires powers the horn. So it's essentially two different alarms in one. So this terminal block right here says STB on it. So that is for the strobe. And this one says AUD on it, which means audio, which means it's the horn. Now, just like what we're already doing, if you want this alarm to work in two wire operation, meaning you only need two wires to power both the horn and the strobe, you can use jumpers. And just like what we're doing on a smaller scale, we can connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive and continue to jump the power over so that it powers both the strobe and the horn. So here I'm going to take my next set of wires and I'm going to make sure that the red goes to red and the black goes into the negative terminal and then I'm going to make sure that the end of the wire that I just wired in to the AS is going to go on the proper positive and negative terminal on the Wheelock MT. And there we go, we now have two alarms wired up and really all I've done is I've taken the power that would normally go to this alarm and I've jumped it over to this alarm. So now they both receive power when the button gets activated. Here's another question I commonly get when it comes to wiring up fire alarms. This right here is a Wheelock Exceder mounting bracket. And as you can see, there's three terminal screws. One of them has a plus next to it, so it's a positive terminal screw. And then the other one has a minus next to it, so it's a minus terminal screw. But as you can see, there's an extra one in the middle. So is this a four wire alarm? No. So this is just an extra positive terminal screw that they added in to help you to, for when you're wiring this to multiple alarms or when you're wiring in a resistor on an actual fire alarm system. So now that everything's all wired up, let's test it. Here we go. You can see they were both going off and let's test out the other pull station. I think it's working. That's going to be my video today on how to wire up multiple fire alarms together without a fire alarm control panel. I hope this was helpful. Thank you all for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.